In Washington right now, though, President Biden and the First Lady are greeting Japanese Prime Minister Fumo Kishida, Kushida rather, and his wife at the White House for an official visit. The leaders are set to announce heightened defense and intelligence cooperation between the two countries. Our Ed O'Keefe is following all of this for us from the White House. Hey, Ed, looks really nice out there today. Uh, oh, it's, things are starting are able, up. As honors are rendered to the president and remain standing for the arrival of the Prime Minister of Japan and Mrs. Kishida and the playing of the national anthems of Japan and the United States. Hey, Ed, I know you, uh, the national anthem is playing, um, and if you can, uh, take us through the agenda for today. Vlad and Amory, good to be with you. The president, as you see, is about to walk out of the White House here for the beginning of these meetings. Uh, what, in essence, administration officials would tell you is sort of the capstone of three years of work by the Japanese to really begin boosting their military and intelligence capabilities at a time when China is causing so much concern across the Indo-Pacific region. You're going to hear today about a series of steps uh, across the military, the economy, education, society, that just once again boosts and bolsters the relationship between the United States and Japan. Perhaps the most notable one, and we can see the Japanese Prime Minister now approaching uh, the White House here, is plans to, in essence, more closely coordinate the U.S. and Japanese military on Okinawa. Uh, it's a critical military outpost, of course, in relationship given China and the concerns there, but not nearly as coordinated or modern, frankly, as the relationship that the United States has with Korea. So as Japan has boosted its, its military spending in recent years, we're now, in essence, going to meet them as they continue to grow and, and work on uh, boosting that uh, relationship in the coming months. And again, all of this designed to counter the aggressive nature of China these days. Tomorrow, this meeting expands to three. But let's take a look at these, uh, at this arrival. Um, so, Ed, you were talk we're going to continue to uh, watch these pictures as uh, the, the president and uh, the prime minister sort of greet other dignitaries, including um, the uh, vice president and others. But you were talking about how the agenda is shifting tomorrow. Yeah, so in addition to all the announcements that will be made today, uh, tomorrow this meeting expands to three and will include uh, the president of the Philippines, Marcos. Uh, for the first time, these three leaders are going to meet here in Washington. Again, at a time that China is causing uh, some pretty, uh, or taking a much more aggressive posture against the Philippines. As one U.S. administration official told reporters last night, in essence, it's China now that's isolated in this situation, not the United States or not Philippines, uh, as they continue to face off with the Chinese Navy uh, off, of, off of its shores. Uh, again, at a time when the Middle East uh, and Ukraine dominate a lot of the coverage in this country when it comes to foreign policy, it's these relationships with Indo-Pacific countries that the president has been worried about and focused on quite intently over the course of his term. And these kinds of official visits by their leaders are designed to set Send that signal to those countries, send that signal across the Indo-Pacific and especially to China to say, while you think about invading Taiwan, while you think about taking over uh, much more uh, of the Indo-Pacific region, or at least try to flex your muscle, uh, don't forget that the United States is watching and working with your allies. Things like uh, putting a Japanese astronaut on the moon when the United States returns to the moon in the coming years with the Artemis mission. That's on the list of things being done. Japan's going to be paying for some new submarine cables to some far-flung Pacific islands. All of it, again, designed to keep the United States in touch with those areas as China tries to uh, boost its influence there. Uh, I think we're, 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 we think that the national anthems are just about to begin, Ed, so let's just pause for a moment. Uh, 
while we wait for that book. Uh, the national anthems have played, Ed, and we expect that uh, the remarks are going to begin uh, very, very shortly. Uh, I have a question for Ed. Yeah, go for you it. You know, Ed, you talked a lot about the concerns about Chinese expansion. I would think that North Korea w would also be a concern for Japan. Is, is that on the agenda at all, or is, is China sort of the biggest threat? Uh, China is certainly the most urgent one, Anne-Marie, but yes, obviously there's always concern about what North Korea may be up to, especially given that it has continued uh, in the past year to conduct uh, missile tests, or at least threaten to conduct more of them. What we're going to see next is the official review of the troops here. Uh, again, we, we don't do this that often in the United States, uh, but for these, what this is a is a official visit because of course the Prime Minister is the head of government, not the head of state, that's the Emperor of course. But he's getting the full treatment here today uh, to reinforce the importance of this relationship. Uh, yes, North Korea would obviously be a concern, China, but it's even, uh, you know, other sort of broader concerns, things like cybersecurity, the future of artificial intelligence. There's going to be a lot of announcements regarding commercial and academic research work between the two countries. Uh, in that regard, there's been some concern that Japan needs to work on its cybersecurity and information technology security uh, at a time of, of graver cyber threats around the world. And so part of what today's meetings are about is reinforcing that and announcements of plans to help them with that. Um, but one of the more remarkable things in the last three years, at least what U.S. officials would tell you, is that this is a country that Japan is, that has maintained neutrality, of course, in most matters, and not been as big a global player in the years, of course, since World War II. Uh, but what the Prime Minister has done is, in essence, injected Japan into those conversations, visiting Ukraine, uh, speaking out quite forcefully about its concerns with China and what, what Russia is doing in Ukraine. Th that's stuff that thrills the President um, because he wants to reinforce these relationships between countries like Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, the Philippines, uh, as China does what it is doing or is threatening to do.
Uh, so by having this meeting today, by broadcasting these images to the world, and into China especially, it reinforces the signal and the message the Biden administration has been trying to send, which is if China tries to be more aggressive and take on its neighbors and take over broader swaths of the South China Sea and other areas, the United States will respond in kind. Ed, let me ask you while we uh, look at these pictures here uh, about some of the other news bubbling up uh, over the last couple of days, including uh, what's been happening in the state of Arizona. Uh, has there been any reaction from the Biden administration about what many are calling a draconian uh, law implemented by the Arizona State Supreme Court? I know the administration has been uh, messaging on abortion rights uh, over the past couple of months, but specifically as it relates to what's going on there. They anticipated the ruling would go this way, Vlad, and so you saw pretty quickly the White House yesterday denounce it. Uh, the vice president especially quite forcefully denouncing it and warning in a series of social media posts uh, that this is what Donald Tr Trump uh, caused and uh, a Democratic Congress and President Biden would restore the Roe versus Wade protections that were in place before. She's going to be visiting Arizona on Friday uh, to make that point a little more sharply. And, and so that plays out, of course, while officially, at least, the White House is focused on this visit um, and, and the big geopolitical impact it can have. Here comes my favorite part of the whole thing, guys. Uh, th these guys uh, performing now. Uh, this is the distinct part of these visits. You should take a look. Let's yeah. watch. Yeah. Um, Ed, you said that that was your favorite part, and I understand why once the camera pulled out. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what we just saw? Uh, it's all part of the uh, official, military's official uh, greeting in the review of uh, U.S. forces that goes on any time they hold one of these arrivals English here at the White House. The president the president there essentially States. telling these guys to go at ease as he now Which plans to address the crowd. Ms. Kushida, welcome, 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 welcome. On behalf of Jill and me, the Vice President, the Second Gentleman, and all the American people, welcome to the White House. Sixty-four years ago, our two nations signed a treaty of mutual cooperation and security. President Eisenhower said his goal was to establish an indestructible partnership between our countries. Today, the world can see that goal has been achieved, and that partnership between us is unbreakable.
省略の目的は両国間の間に熱のパーツナーシップを築くことだと言いました今日その目的が成し遂げられ私たちのパートナーシップは世界が認める盤石なものとなっています The alliance between Japan and the United States is the cornerstone of peace, security, prosperity in the, in the Indo Pacific and around the world. Ours is truly a global partnership. For that, Mr. Prime Minister Kishida, I thank you. The Prime Minister is a visionary and courageous leader. When Russia began its brutal invasion of Ukraine two years ago, he did not hesitate to condemn, sanction, and isolate Russia and provide billions in assistance to Ukraine. Under his leadership, Japan set in motion profound changes in its defense policies and its capabilities. Now, now our two countries are building a stronger defense partnership and a stronger Indo stronger Indo Pacific than ever before. As president of the G7 last year, the Prime Minister rallied Japan's partners to take action on nuclear disarmament, global poverty, economic resilience, and other critical issues that shape peace, security, and opportunity for billions of people around the world. And last year, the Prime Minister took one of the boldest steps yet when he and President Yoon of the Republic of Korea decided to heal all wounds and start a new chapter of friendship. Our historic summit that I hosted at Camp David marked the start of an entirely new era, infused with hope, shared values, and focused relentlessly forward. Because these leaders know that the division that defined us in the past do not need to define us in the future. That has also been the story of Japan and the United States. Just a few generations ago, our two nations were blocked in a devastating conflict. It would have been easy to say we remain adversaries. Instead, we made a far better choice. We became the closest of friends. Today, our economic relationship is one of the strongest and deepest in the world. Our democracies are beacons of freedom shining across the globe, and the ties of friendship, family, connect the Japanese and American people as the source of joy, meaning, and meaning for millions, millions of our people. Today, our 
Japanese Americans have made historic contributions across American life for generations. And that includes my mentor and one of my closest friends ever in the United States Senate, Senator Daniel Inouye, a decorated war hero, a U.S. Senator for nearly 50 years, and a recipient of the Medal of Honor. Yesterday, Prime Minister laid a wreath at the National Japanese American Memorial in honor of Danny Inouye's 100th birthday, something I truly appreciate you having done. Mr. Prime Minister, you and I have been entrusted with protecting and advancing the monumental alliance between our two great democracies. Together, we made it closer, stronger, and more effective than ever before in history. I thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for your partnership, your leadership, and your personal friendship. Let me end with this. It's spring in Washington. The sun is shining. And every spring, cherry blossoms bloom across this city, thanks to a gift from Japan of 3,000 cherry trees over a century ago. People travel all over our country and the world to see these magnificent, these magnificent blossoms. Last night, Prime Minister and Mr. Kishida, Jill and I took a stroll down the driveway across the lawn here at the White House to visit three cherry blossom trees. One that Jill and Mr. Kishida planted together a year ago. The other two are among the 250 new trees that Japan is giving the United States to honor our 250th birthday two years from now. They'll be planted at the Tidal Basin, not far from the Martin Luther King Memorial. And like our friendship, these trees are timeless, inspiring, and thriving. May God bless the Japanese and American people. May God protect our troops. Mr. Prime Minister, Ms. Kishida, welcome back to the White House. All right, President Biden there making remarks uh, during the Japanese Prime Minister's official state visit. Uh, the Prime Minister and his wife will attend a state dinner tonight. Uh, Ed O'Keefe has all the details about what we can expect. Ed, what are you hearing?
Prime oh, I'm so glad you asked, Vlad. <laughs> uh, quite a meal planned in the East Room later tonight. Uh, among other things, they're serving shisho leaf fritters. You ever had one of those? I mm, have. Oh, yeah. steak. Shisho uh, leaf, yes. Yeah, blistered shishito pepper butter on that uh, ribeye steak later tonight. Uh, salted caramel pistachio cake for dessert, along with a matcha ganache, a cherry ice cream, and raspberry drizzle. So, you know, it'll be a great meal. Mm. And they'll hear from uh, Paul Simon afterward, uh, wow. who will be performing for the invited guests. Anne Marie, you were talking about koi ponds earlier. They're yes. transforming <laughs> the main floor of the White House residence uh, into sort of a Japanese garden that's going to include images of uh, koi ponds on the floor. So look out for those images later tonight. Oh, wow. Uh, when they have that dinner. Yes, uh, they're going all out here that uh, at 1600 really cool. today for the Japanese. And I love that the president referenced the cherry blossoms, Ed. I mean, uh, D.C.'s been very lucky. We've been waiting for them here on the west side of New York in Central Park for uh, quite some time. But I feel like they got there a little early in yeah. D.C. Uh, yes, and those 200 are going to help replenish a bunch that they actually have to cut down along the tidal basin to rebuild it uh, due to some erosion there. But uh, the Japanese are uh, quite eager to help replenish the supply. Uh, we had a pretty good cherry blossom season here in Washington this year, so uh, we appreciate the uh, replenishment of our stock. If yes. <laughs> Ed O'Keefe is spending some time with us uh, during uh, this uh, very big deal where the president is greeting the Japanese prime minister. Ed, thank you very much as always, my friend. Appreciate it. Take care.